Now, I want you to turn with me tonight in your Bibles, and we're turning to the Old Testament tonight. And we're turning, first of all, to the Old Testament book of the prophet Jeremiah. And we're in Jeremiah chapter 23, please. The book of the prophet Jeremiah chapter 23. God has been speaking through the prophet Jeremiah. And through the prophet Jeremiah, God is warning the nation of coming judgment. The nation has been rebelling against every warning. The nation has been continuing to live in sin, and continuing to rebel against God. You know, friend, when you rebel against God tonight, and you still fool about and live in sin, you fail to heed his voice tonight. You invite judgment. And the nation is inviting judgment, and through the prophet Jeremiah, God has been speaking. And God has been warning the nation of what was to come. But there was a problem in the nation. Not only was God speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, but the devil was speaking. And the devil was speaking through false prophets. And friend, what the false prophets were saying was contrary to what God was saying. When we come to Jeremiah 23, come down to verse 16. And this is what we read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak of, they speak of a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, Ye shall have peace. And they say unto every one that walketh after the imaginations of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesy. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from of the evil of their doing. And then I want you to come with me to chapter 38, please. Chapter 38 of Jeremiah. And we're coming to my text here in chapter 38. And Jeremiah speaks to the king of the land. And his name is Zedekiah. And in Jeremiah 38 and verse 20, But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver thee, Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord, which I speak unto thee. So it shall be well unto thee. 
and thy soul shall live. Amen. And we know that the Lord will bless to our hearts tonight the reading of his own precious truth. Nothing tonight has fooled more people than deceit. And yet with deceit and by deceit, people are being fooled every day. People are being deceived in financial matters. And not only are people being deceived in financial matters, people are being deceived today in political matters, and boys will not go down that road tonight. You know what's one of the signs of the last times? Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, you'll remember what the Lord Jesus answered and how he answered the question, What shall be the sign of thy coming? He says, Be ye not to see. Now listen, friends, tonight. It's one thing to be deceived in political matters, and it's one thing to be deceived in financial matters. Let me tell you this tonight. It's another thing to be deceived in spiritual matters. And let me tell you, friends, tonight, there's people and they're being hoodwinked spiritually. There's more deceptions taking place today in pulpits than anywhere else. And if there ever was a day, there's a day in which we live, friends, the day in which we live, that the truth must be told. The Lord Jesus says, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 25, they've turned the truth of God into a lie. Do you know what deceit is, friends? Deceit is making a lie sound like the truth. You see, friend, in Jeremiah chapter 23, we have these false prophets tonight. And these false prophets tonight are contradicting the Word of God. Anything that God said, these false prophets argued against it and preached against it. Or do you know, friends, tonight there's many men like that today deceiving people spiritually. People tell us now, men tell us now, sure you don't need to repent from sin. You can live whatever way you like. You'll not live whatever way you like. Because God says, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And people are being deceived today because they're being told you don't need to repent from your sin. You can get saved and, and live whatever way you want. My friend, you won't live whatever way you want. Then there's other who will tell us, but you don't need to be saved. Do you live a good life? What are you talking about getting saved for? And you know, friends, what the problem is today? You'll get people who will listen to lies before they would even listen to truth. But my friend, God says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I can tell you, friends, there's hundreds tonight, and they're being deceived spiritually. You no know, friend, for years I was being deceived. I thought being a good life, living a good life, being a good person, doing nobody any harm, going to your place of worship, you were as sure as heaven as anybody. I'll tell you, friend, I was being deceived. wonder are you being deceived tonight? 
Because the Lord Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Do you know, friends, this evening what God says? In Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 6, this is what he says. Through deceit, through deceit, the people refuse to know me. There was a lady from my hometown who attended a faith mission gospel campaign. She came under a powerful conviction of sin and God was speaking to her. And because God was speaking to her, she left the mission one evening. And she went to her local minister to talk about these things. She went to her minister and says, you know, I've been out to the mission. And I believe God has been speaking to me and I believe I need to be saved. And the minister turned around and told her, what do you mean you need to be saved? Weren't you baptized? Yes. Weren't you confirmed? Yes. You're all right, she said. You don't need to see it. You know that woman told me that story herself. Do you think was that minister telling her the truth? I can tell you, friends, now that minister was deceiving her. A number of years after that, there came another mission to the town. Thankfully, God spoke to her the second time, and the second time she got saved. But I want to say this tonight. There's too many people tonight, and they're listening to lie. Don't you be deceived tonight. Too many people ended up in hell because they were deceived. Too many ended up, friend, in hell because they believed the lie rather than believed the truth. Now, I want to come to my text tonight, and this is what God wants to say to us. Jeremiah 38 and verse 20, and Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver thee Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord which I speak unto thee, and so shall it be well unto thee, and thy soul shall live. You know, first of all, that text speaks of an answer that is assuring. You know what it says there, and they shall not deliver thee. Do you know what, that, what Jeremiah was saying? Do you know Zedekiah tonight had a great fear? He had a great fear that the Jews would mock him if he obeyed the voice of the Lord. The man was afraid tonight to obey the voice of the Lord because people would mock him, the Jews. Do you know, friends, tonight, I believe there's people who know the need to be saved, believe the need to be saved, but they're afraid to be saved. Oh, if I become a Christian, I'll be the talk of the workplace. If I become a Christian, they'll throw me out of the house. If I become a Christian, they'll laugh at me. Listen, friend, this is why you're not saved tonight. Jeremiah had this answer that was assuring. Zedekiah told Jeremiah, listen, the Jews will deliver me and they'll mock me. If I do obey, he says they'll not deliver thee. Now listen, friends, do you see the night I come under conviction of sin? That fear gripped my heart. What's my mother going to say? For mind you, I was reared in a staunch Church of Ireland home, but thank God we had a soundly saved minister. What's my friends going to say? What's my 
this school friend's going to say, my drinking friend's going to say, the boys are fool about with, what are they going to say? But I'll tell you, friend, God spoke to me that night, and this is what God said, your friends can laugh you into hell, but they won't laugh you out of it. Maybe there's somebody here tonight, or somebody listening here through this YouTube channel. You know you need to be saved. You know you need to repent of your sin. You know tonight that Christ is the only one that can save you. But tonight you're afraid. You're afraid of what others might say. You're afraid of what others might do. I'll tell you this tonight. The Bible says the fear of man bringeth forth a snare. I knew a man called Tom Ross. Tom Ross was in the loyalist paramilitary. And Tom got wonderfully saved, and he had to go and tell his commander, his brigade commander, that he could see. He got down on his knees and says, Lord, what am I going to do for him? Probably going to lose my kneecaps. Maybe worse, lose my life over. And God spoke to him, and this is what he said, Fear not them which can kill the body. But fear him that can destroy both body and soul in hell. And Tom Ross went and told his brigade commander that he had become a Christian and he wants to turn away from the violence. And he says, this brigade commander says, Tom, if there's anything you need to do, it was that. And he says, Tom says, I could have kissed him. I'll tell you this, friend, when you commit your life to Christ, Christ will take care of you. I'll tell you, take care of me. The answer that was assured. I want you to notice something else in that text tonight. There is the charge that was commanded. Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord that I speak unto thee. Do you know, friend, God was speaking to Zedekiah through the servant? And thank God, God still speaks today through a servant. And friend, God speaks to you tonight. God wants you to know this tonight. God wants you to know that He loves you. In spite of your sin tonight, God loves you. Or perhaps in spite of your good works and being a good person, God wants you to know that you still need converted. This is what God wants you to know tonight. God wants you to know tonight that He sent His Son to die on the cross at Calvary. God wants you to know tonight that He really loves you this evening. And He sent His only begotten Son to the cross, and there He gave His life for you. God wants you to know this tonight. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. This is what God says tonight. Look unto me and be ye saved, saith the Lord. For I am God. And there is none else. Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord that I speak unto thee. None save friend tonight. You might be a good person. But tonight, here's what God wants you to know. God wants you tonight to forsake any silly notion that you're good enough for heaven. God wants you to look to the cross tonight. God wants you to behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. He wants you to come to Christ tonight. Just the way you are.
I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way than this. I'll ne'er get sight of the gates of light of the way of the cross. Either. God calls you tonight. Come to the cross. Come to Christ. He suffered for you. He bled for you. He died for you. So that he could save you. But tonight the Lord Jesus isn't on the cross. He's a risen Savior. Will you obey the voice of the Lord tonight which I speak unto you? Or are you going to listen to fools tonight? We preach lies. We preach tripe rather than truth. Because the Lord Jesus says, except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's why the truth needs to be told tonight. As Jesus said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I want you to notice thirdly in that text tonight, there's not only the answer that brings assurance. There's not only tonight the charge of commandment. I want you to notice thirdly in that text tonight, there is the surety of salvation. Listen to it. They shall not deliver thee. Obey the voice of the Lord which I, which I speak unto you. Here's the surety of salvation that it may be well with thee. And thy soul shall live. I want to say a friend tonight, we all must die. Will it be well with thee if death was to come to me? Would it be well with thee tonight if the Lord should come? Would thy soul live if death was to take you to see? A lady called Frances Willard lay dying. She knew the Lord Jesus for many years. Her daughter held her hand as she was slipping away. Her daughter asked her, Mama, what's it like today? She said, it's beautiful. knowing that I'm going to be with Jesus. That's the beauty of knowing Christ. That's the beauty of trusting Christ. That's the beauty of accepting Christ in it. So shall it be well with thee, thy soul shall live. Poor Zedekiah wouldn't heed the voice of the Lord. He listened to the voice of the false prophet. And when judgment came, he tried to escape through the gate between two walls of the city. What fear. Don't you try and escape another way. You can't escape God's judgment. And how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Obey tonight, I beseech thee. The voice of the Lord, which I speak unto thee, 
so shall it be well with thee and that thy soul should live. That's by prayer. Lord, tonight we know how thy truth can offend people, how thy truth can upset people. But we have learned tonight why the truth must be told. And I pray, Lord, tonight that some soul here or anywhere that's listening to this message they would come to not only know the truth, but accept the truth and believe the truth. And trust Christ in it. So shall it be well with them and that their soul should live. Lord, give the saving grace that sinners will be well. Trust the Savior. We pray in his name. Number two hundred.